everyone, this is Melissa from Melissa Made, and today I'm going to share with you a little card I made using the adorable Tiddly Inks Hang In There stamp set and the We Are Memory Keepers paper pad called Baby Mind. And here I start with the little birds from that Tiddly Inks clear stamp that I mentioned, and I'm using Y32 to flick in some color on the birds. And I apologize for my hands, uh, they kind of got in the way while I was videotaping. I took I took the picture at an angle that I was hoping would actually help you see and it and it, I kinda hindered that process. So I, I flipped in Y32 leaving some white spots on the bird. Leaving white spots when you color will really enable you to have a nice highlight at the end. Now I'm taking my Y35 and flicking in some color just over the Y32 that I already have there. And lastly I'm going to take a Y38 and flick in some more darker spaces on the birds. <clears throat> this will give me a nice shadowy edge. The next thing I'd like to do is take my Y32 and I'm going to go ahead and flick over the dark spots with my Y32 and then finish coloring in the bird entirely. And here you can see I'm just flicking in the color first over the dark and then I'm going over all of the light spots. And the last thing I want to do to give a little more contrast is I'm going to take a YR27 and I'm going to fill in the edges to give an even deeper shadow to the little tiny birds that you can see. And there you go. This is a, this is just some cardstock I grabbed. I didn't want to use fancy for the inside of cards, so it kind of bled a little bit outside the lines, but that has more to do with the paper than anything else. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you how I created the card. Um, I'm using these two um, Spellbinders dies, and I'm also using this Birdhouse die that I, that I um, received. <clears throat> so I cut out the Birdhouse and a number of um, different patterned papers, and I used Bitter, uh, bitter Chocolate, basil cardstock and also guacamole green cardstock and then the pattern paper that you see there is the We Are Memory Keepers paper. Now I'm going to start with this small die and I cut out my pattern paper on my cuddle bug and I also cut out the inside of the card. Now with a larger die I'm going to take the bitter chocolate and I cut out one flat piece. I also folded a piece in two and leaving the die somewhat off of the fold, I cut out this card. I have other videos that show you how to do this, but it's very simple. You just fold the paper and type the die so that it's not entirely over the fold, and then you cut it out, and it creates a nice little shaped card for you. Now, this the the single piece of chocolate bitter or the bitter chocolate is going to be the um, front of the card. So I'm just kind of lining up everything here to see how it goes together. And I'm going to take this pattern paper and place on top. Before I started hearing stuff, I always kind of lay things out to see if I'm going to like it. <clears throat> I'm going to use some of this twine that I received from my craft spot. It's a brown twine, and it also has a little bit of tan, and it's, really, it's a really pretty baker's twine. It's kind of hard to see in the video. And here I'm just measuring out the length that I need to go around my card. I never go entirely around the card with my um, baker's twine, I always cut it and just adhere the sides. And I do that because I don't like to have a big lump behind the back of my cards. <clears throat> so I'm trying to decide if I want the baker's twine to go all the way around <clears throat> that card base or if I want it to go just around the um, pattern paper. And I think in the end I decided to go all the way around the bittersweet card base and the um, pattern paper. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere this pattern paper to that base that I have initially. The reason why I cut out um, an extra piece of single in that brown paper there is because when you cut out a shaped card with your nestables, Oftentimes you'll have a flat edge where you don't want one, um, and that has to do with where your fold is in the card. You can't get the entire pattern without chopping it in two. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and put on the baker's twine. I'm trying to think about where the birdhouse is going to go on the front of the card, and I think I'm going to put the baker's twine in a lower position. And the reason why I want to put it in a lower position is because I'd like to balance out the sentiment that I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead, and this is how I like to put on the baker's twine. I just put on some adhesive on both sides. And once I have that ready, I'm going to go ahead and put the baker's twine <clears throat> around the front and adhere it to that tape in the back. I like to line it up so it's all nice and even. So you can see I'm just going to wrap it around the back, stick it down, and then wrap it around the other side and stick it down. And then I like to go um, in with my ATG tape again and go over the um, baker's twine on the back. And the reason I like to do that is to make sure there's adhesive there too, because then it'll stick in two places so it won't be pulled out. And now I'm going to go ahead and attach it to my card base. I think I'm going to make it a top fold instead of a side fold. I like um, top fold cards a little bit better only because they're easier to take pictures of. So I'm going to go ahead and line up the two patterns and stick that down, making sure my baker's twine is in the right place. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, adhere the birdhouse pieces together that came with my um, birdhouse die. I'm going to use some aqua glue. This is my favorite glue. Um, it's water-based. It dries very clear. It dries pretty fast, but it allows me some movement so that when I'm trying to place pieces, um, you know, I have some good movement. The biggest mistake that I see first-time crafters um, do with glue is very often they'll use way too much. And with cardstock, it's okay to use a little bit extra, but when you start dealing with patterned paper, like the piece that I'm using, oftentimes if you use too much glue, it gets very wrinkly, and it just doesn't look very good. So my suggestion is you put a little dollop of glue onto the object, and then you swirl it around with the tip of your glue. Really, this helps a lot when you have um, something that you need to glue together. That adhesive doesn't really work for. So you're going to see me, um, unfortunately, I'm out of the camera there. I was hoping you could see me um, put on a dollop and then swirl it around. So I'm just going to adhere the center. And that green, again, is called guacamole. It's the basil textured cardstock. I love textured cardstock. It seems to be a bit stronger. And it also has a little bit more surface area for adhering glue to. Now you can see here, I'm going to put a little bit dollop of glue and then I'm just going to kind of spread it around with the tip. This allows me to use the least amount of glue so that I don't get any puckering or any strange um, paper creases or anything with using too much glue. And then finally I have the little foot pedestal for the birdhouse and I'm going to put a little tiny bit of glue on that and adhere that. Now the sentiment that I'm going to be using, it says a little, little birdie told me, and it's also from the Hang In There Tiddly Inks clear stamp set. The stamp set's really cute. The, the accessories are just as cute as the little um, image that comes with it of the little girl. So now I'm going to find a good place for my birdhouse, and I've decided to use pop dots uh, to adhere the birdhouse down. And I also want to add a little bit more baker's twine to this, I think, and maybe create a bow. So now I'm getting out some pop dots that I can put on the back of my birdhouse. I really prefer the large foam pop dots. These work great for me. I've tried the 3D, the 3D glue dots, and they're just so sticky. And oftentimes when you use those, they don't stay flat. They're kind of bumpy. And I don't like when um, my images kind of pop out, but they're kind of lumpy. So I like to use these, these large 3D foam dots for most of my projects. Um, I don't want to put any of the foam dots where the baker's twine is, mostly because I don't want it to pop up any higher than the baker's twine. So I kind of le am leaving the bottom of the birdhouse without any foam. But I'll add a piece later to the bottom if I need it. It'll just depend on the baker's twine here. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere the birdhouse to my card. And 
And you can see the bottom of the birdhouse has kind of popped up a little bit. So after I get my bow on, I'm going to go ahead and fix that. But I'd like to tie a little bit of Baker's twine uh, for a bow here. So I'm going to I'm going to do a double bow. So I'm cutting out two pieces of Baker twine, Baker's twine, <clears throat> and then I'm going to pull it under my Baker's twine that's already adhered to my card. And the way I like to do that is to use a pair of tweezers. And I simply slip the tweezers under the twine and pull it through. This really, really helps me um, pull it through without messing up the baker's twine that's already there. <clears throat> So I simply pull it through and then I go ahead and tie it like I would a normal bow. For a lot of my bows that you see on my creations, I'm actually using a bow tire. I can't use it with baker's twine. It doesn't look right for some reason. It just doesn't work very well. Um, but for ribbon, my husband made me a wonderful bow tire. And in some video, I'll show you how I use that as well. I got the idea from another blog. And unfortunately, I can't remember the blog. It's been so long now that he made it. Um, but I will show that in another video at some point so you can see how I make bows. <clears throat> so I'm just going to cut off the excess here. Always use a little bit more than you need. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can have um, a nice bow. Now here I'm going to go ahead and cut my foam dot in half. I like to do this when I need just a little piece. And I'm going to use the the bottom um, or attach the bottom of the birdhouse, sorry, to my paper. And then the last thing I need to do is attach my sentiment. I, I stamped the um, sentiment on just a plain white piece of cardstock in brown memento ink. <clears throat> And um, then I adhere that to the guacamole basil cardstock again to match. And I'm going to add a little bit of glue to one side of this because it's going to adhere to the birdhouse. Again, I put a dollop and kind of smear it around. And now I can go ahead and adhere that to my birdhouse. I like the sentiment offset a bit because it gives the card a bit of balance since the bow is on the other side. And I think that's good for the front. Now the last thing I need to do is, ad is adhere the um, inside of my card where the little birds I colored are. And I'm going to use that, my ATG tape, for this. And I just like to put a few strips of tape on the inside. And then simply adhere that to the inside of the card. And then you can stamp some other kind of sentiment in here. If it's a baby card, you can say congratulations on your new arrival, or a little birdie told me it was your birthday. There's all kinds of fun sentiments you can use on the inside. But I like to add that little stamp on the inside because it really does add something special. Well, I hope you enjoyed this simple project from Melissa at Melissa Made, and I do hope you'll join me for my next video coming soon. Thank you and have a great, great day.